All right, so these are the two top questions, um, 19 and 20. Uh, very simple, uh, but in my actual recording, they were sort of messed up. Um, so I'll do them really quickly. For these two top questions, it's very important. You're going to get a graph like this, and where they give you the graph of the derivative. All right, so this is the graph of the derivative, not the actual graph. So what you need to do for this question is write your table of variation. And your table of variation will look like this. Okay? Obviously, instead of f, put g. It doesn't really matter. Um, sorry. Other way around. It goes x, f of x, f prime of x, then f double prime of x. All right? This is how your table should look. Now, what do I do? I start by writing this. Then I need to fill in my table. So what I do is I analyze my graph. The first thing I look at is what's this graph? This is f prime of x. I look at how is my f prime of x going? If you see here, f prime of x from minus 9 increases up until minus 7. They said had that minus 7. Right? So from minus 9 to minus 7, f prime of x is increasing. Cool. Then minus 7, it decreases all the way until it reaches 2. So from minus 7 till 2, it decreases. I'm going to put like a dash here and a dash here. All right, then from 2 up until 5, it increases. Then from 5 until 9, it decreases. All right, nice. So you have these now. Let me just move them a bit down because this is too high. All right. Okay, so you have these. Now, if f prime of x is increasing, doesn't that mean the derivative of it would be positive at that value? Yes, it will. Mish, if a graph is increasing, that means the derivative of that graph is going to be positive. Exactly. So the value of the derivative would be positive here since it's increasing. And what's the derivative of f prime of x? Isn't that f double prime? Exactly. All right. Now, since it's decreasing, then how much would the derivative be? Negative. And since it's increasing, it has to be positive. Since it's decreasing, it's going to be negative. Cool. We still have the f of x part left. How do you do the f of x part? The first thing is, before going there, is I want to identify my zeros. What are my zeros here? Minus 8, minus 4, and 5. All right, so minus 8, I put it here. I put a 0 here, and above it, I put minus 8. And then minus 4. Where's minus 4? Minus 4 is over here, so I put again 0, and above it, minus 4. And then over here at 5, I put a 0. So I put the 0 not on the middle of the arrow, like it on the side, because it's uh, it's at ending at 5, and I know my 0 is at 5, so it's it's the 0 is where it's ending, so that's why I put it at the end of the arrow. All right, anyways, what else? Now we fit in, fill in f of x. Now, to fill in f of x, I either want to know if it's increasing or if it's decreasing. That's all I care about. How do I know? This is how you check. If, this is the, this is the derivative, g prime, right? If g prime is below the x-axis, like in this graph from minus 9 to minus 8, it's below the x-axis, that means g prime is negative. If g prime is negative, that means g is decreasing. So over here from minus 9 to minus 8, since g prime is negative, we're going to put decreasing. And put this dash. Then after that, you can see that the graph is above the x-axis from minus 8 up until to minus 4. So from minus 8 up to minus 4, since we're above the x-axis, that means g prime is positive. And if g prime is positive, that means g is increasing. So we're going to put it like this. Then from minus 4 up until 5, including up until 9 hatta, it's below the x-axis. So all of this is going to be decreasing. Now we have our table of variation. We can answer anything. First value. Which one does it have a relative minimum? You look, where are my stationary points? My stationary points are at where g prime equals 0. We have one over here, over here, and over here. Let's take a look. This one here, it says 0. How do I know if it's a minimum or maximum? It was decreasing, then it started increasing. So what does that mean? If it decreases, then increases, isn't that a minimum? Yes. So at x equals minus 8. Let's check the rest of them. This one here, it was increasing, then it starts decreasing. So increasing, then starts decreasing. That isn't minimum. That, that, that isn't minimum. That's maximum. And over here, decreasing and then decreasing after, isn't that just an inflection point? It's not max or min, right? This is inflection over here. Anyways, so nothing else is a minimum, so we're just going to move on. Then it said find the relative maximum. Yeah, I just found this. I told you this minus 4 is the maximum. All right. 
then they said g prime prime is negative now g prime prime is negative that's why we included our second column here it's negative over here and over here so it's negative between 2 and minus 7 it's negative between 9 and 5 don't say to the right of 5 because we don't know what comes after 9 we're only studying between minus 9 and 9 all right so this is how you write it or okay um find the values of x at which g attains its absolute maximum now absolute maximum can occur where can occur at the maximum the actual maximum that we found here or it can occur at the endpoints of the curve so it could also occur at minus 9 and at 4 uh, sorry uh, 9 which 4 all right so entirely you need to check how do I check this how do I check this what do we know is uh, we can find the integral now over here if you want to check minus 9 minus 4 9 there's a specific way honestly I'm telling you I didn't get it uh, but so when I read the solution it sort of made sense you need to use integration if you take a look here the area from you can you can kind of like you know when I tell you integral what's the integral of g prime of x it's equal to g of x right well, isn't integral the area under the graph exactly if you take a look the integral from minus 9 to minus 4 of our graph it's gonna be equal to a number I don't know what that number is but it's gonna be in general the area between minus 9 to minus 4 so look at between minus 9 and minus 4 it's this right so this area what do you think is gonna be a positive value or a negative value most of it is above it above the curve so that means it's gonna be positive so that means integral from minus 9 to minus 4 of g prime of x is going to be positive. So what is this? What's the integral from uh, minus 9 to minus 4? Isn't it g of minus 9 minus g of minus 4? That's greater than 0. So what does that mean? Sorry, which g of minus other way around. Other, sorry, I flipped them. You do the one up minus the one down. Isn't it g of minus 4? minus g of minus 9 isn't that greater than 0 so take this there doesn't that mean g of minus 4 is greater than g of minus 9 so if g of minus 4 is greater than g of minus 9 that means could g of minus uh, could minus 9 be the maximum no way since minus 4 is bigger than minus 9 that means no way this is the maximum okay someone might ask how do you go from g prime to g ma I'm telling you habibi we're integrating okay we're doing an integration what's integral of g prime it's just g that's why huh type so this proves why minus 9 isn't 1 let's say 9 how do we check it we check the area from minus 4 up until 9 the area from minus 4 up until 9 by nano it's negative right so integral from minus 4 till 9 of g prime of x dx is equal to what it's equal to g of 9 minus g of minus 4 and you're gonna get that this is what less than zero why because look it's under the, the x-axis so what does that mean g of 9 is less than g of minus 4 why because I took it to the other side so if g of 9 is less than g of minus 4 could g of 9 be the maximum no way so that means what am I left with the only one is minus 4 so that's how you prove it okay you, you just follow these steps that I just use now this and this Alright, question 20. Um, again, the graph of f prime is shown below, whatever, same exact thing. So I'm not going to waste any time, I'm just going to start with the table of variation. Alright, so let's uh, draw the table of variation together. Uh, very easy. X, f of x, f prime of x, f double prime of x, close. Alright, same thing, we see this is the graph of what f prime not f f prime so we start here and we go up right uh, so f prime of x increases from minus 6 up until you don't know how much this is now since they gave you the equation 
you need to figure out the exact value. You can't just put minus 2.5 or minus 2.6 or I don't know what. You can't. You need to put the exact value. Why? Because they gave you the equation. So you can actually solve it mathematically and find the exact value. How? By just deriving this, it's going to become minus 2x minus 5 and equating it to 0. Why? Because this is the point here is the turning point, right? And to find the turning point, you just derive it equal to 0. So by equating to 0, you're going to get x is equal to 5 over 2. Cool. So we're going from minus 6 up until to negative 2.5 because uh, this should be a minus. Uh, up until negative 2.5 and then minus 5 over 2 is the same as minus 2.5 you're going up until there you're increasing so from minus 6 to minus 2.5 you're gonna increase okay cool then from minus 2.5 all the way down to 1 we're gonna decrease then from 1 up until this is what 4 we're gonna increase then from 4 to 6, we're going to decrease. All right, then the second step after this is what? Look at our second derivative. If we're increasing and our second derivative is positive, if we're decreasing, then our second derivative is negative. If we're increasing, again, positive, and then negative. Type. Then we look at our zeros. We have a zero over here, over here, over here, and over here. Over here. At minus 5, we have a 0, so I'm going to put a 0 here and put a minus 5 above it. We have 0 at 0, so I'm going to put a 0 over here and put 0 above it. We have a 0 over here at 2, and we have a 0 over here at 6. So I'm going to put the 0 down here because it's ending at 6 already, so I'm going to put it there. Anyways, so uh, the last step is to look at f of x. Uh, from minus 6 to minus 5, our graph is below the x-axis. If it's below the x-axis, it means that the graph is negative. So if f prime is negative, that means from minus 6 to minus 5, the f of x would be decreasing. And then from minus 5, all right, so I don't know where I stopped because my mom came in the room, uh, but uh, from minus 5 uh, up till 0, our graph is above the x-axis, meaning it's positive. So f prime is positive. That means f of x is what? Increasing. So from minus 5 all the way to 0, we're going to increase. Then our graph is negative between 0 and 2. So that means between 0 and 2, it's going to be decreasing. And then from 2 to 6, since it's above the x axis, it's positive, so it's going to be increasing. We finish our table of variation. Yeah, let's solve this question. Find all the values where it has a relative maximum. Relative maximum, relative, not absolute relative. Relative maximum, and you look, where are our zeros? We have one here, one here, one here, and one here. Now, let's take a look at the zero here. The zero here went from decreasing to increasing. So obviously this is gonna be a maximum. So let's just put a max beside it. So at x equals, uh, at x equals what? Negative five, right? So x equals negative five. The zero here is, sorry, sorry isn't a maximum it's a minimum if it's decreasing then increasing then that's a minimum sorry a huh? minimum um let's check this zero here it was increasing then decreasing so it increased then decreased so obviously this one here is a maximum so at x equals zero and then over here decreased increased so also a minimum so we're not gonna count that and over here we can't tell because it increased and then we stopped at six so we don't know Okay, so until now only zero. Now obviously they and they then they ask for inflection point. Inflection point, you know what? Um, there's uh, no change in concavity. As if there is a change in concavity. If you look here, when do we change concavity? Over here we change from positive to negative. Over here we change from negative to positive. Over here we change from positive to negative. So when you say inflection point, you know what's changing sign? The second derivative changes sign so over here at negative 2.5 at uh, 1 at uh, 1 command 4 then they said find the intervals at which f is concave down any what's if concave down any what second derivative is negative 
If there's concave up, then second derivative positive. Depends. How do they want concave down? For negative, from what do you check? You check from here to here. So between 1 and minus 2.5. And also between here to here, so between 4 and 6. Capish. It's given that f of y is 6 is equal to 10. <laughs> Find the absolute maximum value of f of x. So this is similar to the one as last question. Same thing we have to work with integrals. Now, what can we figure out? Nahna, we have our maximum value at two points. The only one we have here is either the relative maximum or what are the other two possibilities always at your bounds. Okay, always. That's and this is the rule you need to know. Type Nahna, we know that uh, negative six is equal to 10. So let's try and figure out how much it is at zero how much it is at 6, then we can choose the highest one and that will be our maximum. Type, same thing, let's write our integral from 0 to minus 6. Integral from 0 to minus 6 of g prime of x is equal to what? Isn't it g of negative 6 minus g of 0? Exactly. Type, integral of g prime of x from 0 to minus 6 or from minus 6 to 0, whatever. Isn't this a curve, and isn't this the equation of that curve? It is. So that means integral of negative x squared minus 5x from 0 to negative 6 is equal to g of minus 6 minus g of 0. Now what am I trying to find? g of 0. So simply, g of 0 would just be g of negative 6 minus the integral from 0 to negative 6 of negative x squared minus 5x so what's it going to be equal to g of 0 is going to be equal to isn't this 10 it's 10 can I find out what this is you can integrate it or you can just use your calculator integral minus x squared minus 5x from 0 to negative 6 and you get negative 18 so it's going to be 10 minus and this is negative 18 so negative 18 so 10 minus minus 18 so 28 this gets you 28. How about x equals 6? Same thing. We relate it from integral. From 0 to 6. Or you can do from negative 6 to 6. Whatever you want. Now you can continue on and do this. But there's no need to do that. Because you can figure out that f of 0. Or g of 0 or whatever. Is the max. So this 28 is going to be your max. Why is g of 0 your max? Let me tell you why same reason as last time if you look at the integral from negative 6 to 0 okay of whatever g of prime of x that's the area from negative 6 to 0 so it's going to be from here this as well what's going to win it's going to be positive so what does that mean g of 0 minus g of negative 6 is positive so that means g of 0 take this to the other side is going to be bigger than g of negative 6 so can, what does that mean? Can g of negative 6 be max? No way, because it's smaller than g of 0. So let's check the other one. Integral from uh, 0 up until 6, because the second thing we want to check is 6 of g prime of x. Isn't that going to be g, prime, uh, g, sorry, g of 6 minus g of 0? Is it positive or negative? Let's take a look here. It's more negative, so that means we're going to make it negative. Take it to the other side, that means g of 6 is less than g of 0. So if g of 6 is less than g of 0, can g of 6 be max? No way. So which is our maximum? g of 0. And we figured it out from the from the earlier solving, then that is equal to 28. That's it. Here you have the answer as well. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck in your exam.